Ooh. Ooh. That's not a bad idea. That's that a great really idea. Good. Okay. Oh. Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. Today, we are making the Scandinavian mulled wine, Glug. And I think I'm saying that right because it's spelled G L O with an umlaut. GG, but I don't work with umlauts, so I know it's not glog or glug. I think it's glug. Let me know if I'm saying that right. Whatever it is, it's delicious. And it's this spiced wine that's meant to be drunk around Christmas time. A lot of the recipes are family recipes that are handed down, and they're meant for huge gatherings, huge holiday parties. But this year, I'm not gonna be doing any holiday gathering. So I've created my own recipe for this video, which serves two to four people. You can scale it up as big as you need. The only difficult thing is patience but we will get through this together. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's make some glug to the bar. Okay, let's get started. For the booze, we're gonna need red wine, ruby port, and cognac. The red wine I'm using is Louis Jadot Beaujolais. The port is Fonseca Bin 27, and the cognac is Maison Rouge VSOP. Real quick, the red wine, use whatever is a nice red wine that you like, but it doesn't have to be a great red wine. Same with the port. These don't have to be really nice bottles because we're adding sugar and spice and everything nice, and that's just going to cover up all the little nuances of a really good bottle of wine. I like the Beaujolais, it's a lighter red. It offers some like berry sweetness, but whatever you like, if you wanna go heavier red like a Cabernet or another lighter red like a Pinot Noir, it's all good. Red wine. The port, it's a ruby port. I used this last week in the Elk Zone, so waste not, want not. For the non-alcoholic ingredients, I've got Demerara sugar. You want an orange for orange zest. We're just gonna have a few pieces in there. Cinnamon sticks, whole cardamom pods, and whole cloves. Then also, raisins. You're also gonna need a vessel large enough. So I've got a stainless steel pot, and you want to use either stainless steel or enamel coated cast iron. You wouldn't want a metal that would react to the acid in the wine. So no copper, no aluminum, no bare cast iron. Stainless steel is good. Now we put this all into the pot. We're gonna start with the booze. Open your bottle of wine. And go ahead and dump it right into the pot. And then we wanna add the port. For the port, we want roughly half a bottle. So I'm gonna do 12 ounces. It's not an exact science, just whatever seems right. This seems right to me. 12 ounces. And then six ounces of cognac, or the brandy of your choice. Wow, this is gonna be about it. Look at that. Oh, it's meant to be. Now we can turn on the heat and bring this up to temp, but we don't wanna boil, because then we're just gonna cook off all the alcohol. So just warm it up. While that's happening, we can get our spices together. So I've got this little muslin bag that I actually got at my local spice shop. I was not expecting it. This is so nice. I was looking for cheesecloth. So if you have cheesecloth at home, that works great. First things first, we've got four whole green cardamom pods and we're gonna wanna crack those. I like to take two spoons and crush them in between. That's all we need, just to crack them open and put that right into your little spice pouch. You could put this right into the wine, but then you gotta pick it out later. They crack pretty easily. Some of them are a little bit more stubborn, but you'll win. Cardamom, check. Then eight whole cloves. Oops, get them all in the pouch like that. And then two cinnamon sticks. And I'm gonna just crack these in half and get all the bits in there as well. Mm. Okay, the only thing we need now is orange. I'm gonna take four orange swaths just to get the orange oils into there as well. One, two, three, four. Right into the pouch. If you can like that. 
It smells really good. I'm gonna close this off. You could add other spices in here too. If you wanted to add ginger, would be very good. A lot of recipes will actually call for fresh ginger or star anise. That would be good. There's a lot of things you could do. Allspice, the list goes on. All right, back to it. Now we wait till it gets to the right temperature. Go ahead and give it a stir. I like to keep it moving just so it heats evenly. You don't want it too hot on the bottom and it's not gonna take too long. Once the wine starts to steam, then we're about right because we want to kill it before it starts boiling off the alcohol. Then we're gonna add in the sugar and spices. At this point, a lot of other recipes will say to light this on fire, like literally on fire. Then you take white sugar and you pour that into the flame. And what that does is it gives it this nice caramely deep burnt sugar flavor, which is really nice, but I don't like to burn alcohol if I don't have to. Number one, it's dangerous. And number two, you're cooking off alcohol. So instead of doing that, I'm pouring in demerara sugar, which will give me that same deep caramely sweetness. So you can go ahead and pour this into the wine. Give it a stir. And while this dissolves, I'm gonna drop in my little spice pouch. So at this point, you're gonna keep it on heat, but a very low heat. You don't want it to boil, and just let it steep for 20 minutes. Oh, I'm inhaling all these fumes. That's good, 20 minutes, take it off the heat. At this point, I'm going to add the raisins. And I've got a quarter cup of raisins, which are the largest raisins I've ever seen. Look at this. I've never seen raisins this big. They're trying to be prunes. Uh, traditionally, you would add the raisins and slivered blanched almonds. So if you want to add slivered blanched almonds, go ahead and add a quarter cup of slivered blanched almonds. I'm not gonna do that though, because the almonds want to float to the top. And when I'm drinking my glug, I don't like nuts slapping up against my, so I'm just adding the raisins. If you wanna add nuts, add nuts. And let it sit until it comes down to room temperature. It's gonna take about an hour, so just let it do its thing. Okay, so it's been about an hour, and now all we have to do is remove the little spice bag and then heat it back up. So let's do that. Okay, just like before, I'm gonna bring it up to where it's steaming, but not boiling, and then we can serve it. Kill the heat. I've got two glasses here. I like to scoop out a few raisins and put them in the bottom of your glass. And then we can just ladle this into the cup. There it is, glug. Glug. Funny name, delicious drink. Cheers. Cheers. Skull. Skull. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. Mm. It's hot. It's hot. Mmm. <laughs> I want to put this in a little thermos and just go outside with it. Yeah, on a Living. snowy day. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it has a nice round fruitiness up front. And then I get the orange, mm. like the citrus, and then it goes into the spices. Cardamom. I'm left with cinnamon clove. It's I, really nice, warming. I don't know if I, really? I'm i tasting the raisins, but it does taste like, kind of like raisins. Maybe because I know they're in there. Ooh. And cookies. And we even made roasted chestnuts in the meantime because we had so much time. I'm the this bringer is, of roasted chestnuts. This is Oz's winter tradition. Yes. If you haven't tried them, they're super simple to make and they're super fun to eat and they're so tasty. You can just crack them open. Mm. Oh, it's That's not, not gonna focus. Mm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Anyway. Delicious. Take this recipe, make it at home, make changes if you want to, and this will be your recipe. Buy these cookies too. They're so fun. Look mm -hmm. how thin they are. I think that'd be good if I. Is that yeah. weird? How fast do they absorb mm -hmm. the. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's not a bad idea. That's that a great is really idea. Good. Mm. Okay. Oh. These are the cookies we're eating. Anna's Swedish Thins. We have almond and ginger. They also make an orange, which is really good, but they were out of it at the store when I got these. I think so. These remind me of my childhood. 
Oh. Oopsies. Wow, you guys, I don't know if you know this, but this was a really time consuming video. You just witnessed our day. Oh my God, yeah, we started at like 1.30. I don't even know what time it is. That clock See? says six. Anyway, now we get to just sit here and eat chestnuts and cookies and drink mulled wine. So that's not so bad. You can too, you have the recipe. You can too. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little Still warm okay. in here. I gotta open a window. Holy macaroni. We had the oven on to make this. We had the burner on to make the thing and we closed all the windows to get good audio for you. For you? And I'm sweaty. Do you wanna do the sign off? Oh, okay, I've never done the sign off. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified the next time a video comes out. And we will see you next time. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Cheers. Wow, I didn't flub. You did good. I always flub. Oh.